Good afternoon. I'm Callie Crossley, and this is The Callie Crossley Show. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about the self-checkout revolution. In Massachusetts, grocery stores, pharmacies, and even the public libraries are replacing cashiers and librarians with computers. Do you like the independence that these machines offer, or do you prefer the human touch to a machine? Have you lost a job because a computer replaced you? We want your take on this. And joining me in the studio to talk about this self-service revolution are Dipyan Biswash, an associate professor of marketing at Bentley University, and Robert Ferrant, a professor of history and labor studies at UMass Lowell. He's also the co-director of the Center for Family, Work, and Community. And he also lost a job because of technolo- technological innovation. But Robert, you were saying during the break that you're not against technology. You're just uh, against a capitalist really taking a short-term view about how all this works. Well, if, yeah, I mean, if the te- technology over the course of the 19th, 20th century, medicine, communications, uh, transportation, all sorts of things, has obviously made incredible strides and leaps forward. So I wouldn't call myself a Luddite. Back in England, in the, you know, as the textile industry is mechanizing, people went around in the middle of the night cracking machines so that they wouldn't lose their jobs, and those guys were called Luddites um, who did that. So I'm not, I'm not per se a Luddite, but what I... what. What at least I see taking a longer historical view, which is you know part of the research that I do, is when we go from um, horses and carriages to automobiles, lots of people who shoot horses are put out of work, but they could find a job in a foundry that was then going to be casting metal to make automobile parts or what have you. And so that at each point from steam engine, whatever, all the way through these various technological revolutions, there was some net increase. But I would say in the last 40 or so years, as technology has come along and innovated, and some things like this, like we're talking about this afternoon, um, I don't necessarily see them as generating new kinds of jobs in as, in as much abundance. There's certainly going to be jobs for people that program the technologies, that make sure the scanners work, that make the scanners that are going to be in the grocery store. So there's jobs there, of course. But there, there I think, is a net decrease, which explains why over the last 10 years, we've had such anemic job creation in the nation and as well in Massachusetts. And, and let's not forget that retraining is a big issue in this country now, huge. And we're not, we are not invested in it at the level that we should be if, if people are going to be able to get work in another way if their job goes away. Okay, well, I got to tell you, um, I'm one of those people that likes the little man to come and do it. So I, I'm not interested in the self-checkout sure. at all on any level. But here's a question I want to ask the both of you. I want to get back to calls, too. Is service a value in 2011, Robert Ferrant? Uh, for me, service is a value. I definitely go, I go back to places where, and shop where I feel like somebody cared to say even how you're doing today. Um, and considers in some way, you know, what my interests are. I'll shop. I won't, for example, go um, to any mall to buy clothing. If I buy clothing, I'll always go to smaller shops uh, where so I feel like I have mm-hmm. an interaction. Mm-hmm. I, somebody comes and measures me and whatever, and I don't have to guess how big my neck is or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And so, I, you know, I prefer that. I uh, go, um, I live in Lowell. I go a lot to the Andover Bookshop where... They have the kind of books I like. It's not a generic, you know, one-size-fits-all bookstore, and I feel like it's my kind of a place to go to to purchase books. Um, so, yes, yeah, so your answer is yes, it's a value. It matters. And, yeah, it to matters. Me, it matters. Yeah, yeah. Me, me too. I'm, I like uh, the people that fill the tank. I like the people, I like to go through the line with the, with the check person. I want the librarian to check out the book so I can talk to her. And I want to re- remind us of the last snowstorm, not this one that just happened, but the one before. If you remember, mm-hmm. Derek, there were no customer service agents available, which is why those thousands and thousands of people were backed up for days because the only way for any of these people to try to rebook themselves was through this technology, which DIP was overburdened. <laughs> I have to yell at the professor of marketing. <laughs> well, think, of, think back about a month, I think it was, that Comcast had some trouble for most of the East Coast with its... Um, uh, with its broadband, <laughs> and everybody lost their internet connections, and there was panic all over yeah. the East Coast because mm-hmm. now what am I going to do? Exactly. So, Dip, you know, we, we got to think about the fact that we got to say, put on the table that just because you put those machines in, don't right. mean that they work all the time or they're even right. beneficial in every circumstance. Will there always be places where there's no self serve? What do you think, Robert? Well, I I used to think that was the case, but I 
For a long time, I thought jobs in health, a lot of jobs in healthcare were safe, a lot of jobs in education were safe, but I'm sure Dip has seen it as well that we're being pushed all the time to teach online, teach online courses, mm, dump all our content online so that students don't have to have anybody in the room. Um, and so I'm a bit, obviously, since that's what I do, I'm concerned about that. But you also see now increasingly in um, in medicine where, you know, certain tests and things are now are being, you know, read by a machine. And, what, you know, I kind of worry about that. I worry if Mass General sends x-rays to be read or MRIs to be read over the Internet someplace else. Um, there was a funny bit. I don't know if you watch Showtime at all, but Nurse Jackie on Showtime, mm -hmm. a really funny show, the hospital there got an automatic pill dispenser that was going to dispense the right dosage of all sorts of medicines, and it filed up. And in the end, people were just coming in and pounding on it and taking whatever oh they God. wanted. And so, you know, it was like technology gone wild. So I think I would like to, again, I would like to, th I like the interactions, and I would like to think um, that's the case. The earlier caller who talked about the bank, I noticed that I live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of, um, seniors in the neighborhood and I, there's a neighborhood bank and I'll usually go there once a week and in line will always be people who look like they're in their 70s, you know, I hate to stereotype again, yeah. but look like mm -hmm. they're in their 70s, 80s, whatever. And everybody that looks like they're under 30 is at the ATM. Right, right. Um, And you just see this, you know, and so the I economy, think, yeah. yeah, I mean, the marketers of the technology know all those people, you know, in their 70s and 80s aren't going to be around forever and that you're going to create this whole you know, I don't want to call people. I don't want to call us all lemmings, but sort of like lemmings to the sea of the ATM, mm, um, mm. and displace people. And and here we go. It reminds me of the what uh, Robert Putnam book from a while back, right. Bowling, Bowling Alone. Alone. It's sort That's of like right. you know, retailing alone. We can, he should be writing a new book. Uh, thank you both for a fascinating discussion. I've been joined by Dipyon Biswash, an associate professor of marketing at Bentley University, and Robert Ferrant, a professor of history and labor studies at UMass Lowell. He's also the co-director of the Center for Family, Work, and Community, and his most recent book is Metal Fatigue, American Bosch and the Demise of Metalworking in the Connecticut River Valley. We've been talking about man versus machine and how self-service is replacing the role of clerks, cashiers, bank tellers, and librarians.